गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन वेलकम बैक टू जी के टूडे एंड टूडे विल बी डिस्कसिंग मोस्ट इम्पॉर्टेंट एम सी क्यूज फॉर फोर्टीन ऑफ सेप्टेम्बर ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी वन स्टार्टिंग विद वेरी फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन हु हैज बीन अपॉइंटेड एज इंडिया शेरपा फॉर जी ट्वेंटी सो मिस्टर पीयूष गोयल हैज बीन अपॉइंटेड एज इंडिया शेरपा फॉर जी ट्वेंटी एंड ही इज अवर कॉमर्स एंड इंडस्ट्री मिनिस्टर एंड टॉकिंग अबाउट जी ट्वेंटी इट इज एन इन्फ्लुएंशियल ग्रुपिंग विच ब्रिंग्स टगेदर द मेजर इकोनॉमीज ऑफ द वर्ल्ड एंड द नेक्स्ट जी ट्वेंटी समिट इज शेड्यूल्ड टू टेक प्लेस फ्रॉम थर्टीथ ऑफ अक्टूबर टू थर्टी फर्स्ट ऑफ अक्टूबर ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी वन एंड द प्रेजिडेंट वुड बी इटली ऑल्सो द इम्पॉर्टेंट थिंग इज इंडिया विल होल्ड द जी ट्वेंटी प्रेजिडेंसी फ्रॉम फर्स्ट ऑफ डिसम्बर and it will also convene the g20 leader summit in 2023 for the very first time okay and not only this india will also be a part of g20 troika from 1st of december 2021 to 30th of november 2024 okay now apart from it mr arun kumar singh has recently been appointed as new chairman and md of BPCL, that is Bharat Petroleum Corporation Limited, which is a Maharatna and a Fortune Global 500 company. So he has taken the charge on 7th of September 2021. Fine. Now apart from it, in the previous lecture we have talked about former SBI chairperson Mr. Rajneesh Kumar, because recently he has been appointed by Andhra Pradesh government as its economic advisor then government of india has appointed mr harsh bhupendra bangari as the md of exim bank also do remember that gc murmu has recently been elected as the chairman of asosai what does it mean assembly of asian organization of supreme audit institution fine so he will be the chairman for the term period of 2024 to 2027 apart from it under the leadership of mr jayant sinha a parliamentary standing committee on finance has been constituted recently and now this committee would visit rbi and discuss the separation of the debt management function from the rbi okay so here this committee would be chaired by mr jayant sinha so these are some of the important recent appointments Question number two: In which state's national highway an emergency landing facility has been inaugurated by Defence Minister Rajnath Singh? So recently, our Defence Minister Rajnath Singh, along with Union Highways Minister Nitin Gadkari, has inaugurated the emergency landing facility on a national highway in the state of Rajasthan. So this emergency landing facility has been constructed on the Sat Gandha. stretch of nh 925a in barmer rajasthan so this is the first time a national highway will be used for emergency landing of iaf aircraft okay now in the previous lecture we have talked about dial that is the delhi international airport limited and why it is important because recently it has won the prestigious award of cii national energy leader and excellent energy efficient unit at the 22nd national award ceremony for excellence in energy management okay also recently rajasthan has undertaken a biodiversity conservation project with the support of french development agency named as afd why to promote ecotourism so the important thing is rajasthan has collaborated with french company for this purpose okay also do remember that rajasthan has emerged as a leading state in trading at national agriculture market as it was the first state to allow conversion of all single trading licenses into unified licenses to promote e trade of farm products okay also few days back project bold was in news and what is this actually kvic and bsf together launched this project in jaisalmer rajasthan 
and the aim was to develop green cover in indian deserts of rajasthan fine now can you tell me which state of india has launched indira gandhi urban credit card scheme 2021 please write in the comment section question number 3 government of india and adb has signed a 112 million dollars loan in order to develop water supply infrastructure in which state so government of india and the asian development bank has signed this much amount of loan in order to develop water supply infrastructure in the state of jharkhand so the loan will also strengthen capacities of ulb that is urban local bodies in order to improve service delivery in four towns of jharkhand and this project is in line with the priority of jharkhand government to improve urban services in the state and it will also ensure continuous treated piped water supply in ranchi which is the capital of jharkhand and in other three towns named as jhumri talaiya then second is husainabad and the third is medini nagar so these towns are located in economically and socially backward areas and that's why this step has been taken now apart from jharkhand the adb and the government of india has signed a 300 million dollars loan agreement as additional financing to scale up improvement of rural connectivity to help boosting the rural economy in the state of maharashtra so this will actually help in improving 1100 rural roads and 230 bridges for a total length of 2900 kilometers in total of 34 districts not very relevant data but the state is important here also adb has granted 150 million dollars to the state of tamil nadu for a sustainable housing project for the urban poor living there and also india has signed a 500 million usd loan agreement with adb in order to expand metro rail network in bangalore so these are the things regarding adb which are quite important and the headquarter of adb lies in manila philippines question number 4 with which country tamil nadu has partnered to create an energy island in the gulf of mannar so recently the state of tamil nadu and denmark have planned to create an energy island in the gulf of mannar that lies between the west coast of sri lanka and southern east tip of india so this plan was made as tamil nadu is looking to expand its footprint in the green energy sector so to achieve this target denmark is likely to invest 5 to 10 billion dollars in the renewable energy sector in the state and it also includes investment for an energy island in the gulf of mannar so now with this investment island would be able to produce 4 to 10 gigawatt of energy also do remember the tamil nadu government has become the first state in the country to launch free covid-19 vaccination at the private hospitals using csr that is corporate social responsibility funds of various companies okay also tamil nadu bjp leader mr la ganesan has recently been appointed as the governor of manipur and recently tamil nadu has announced to set up india's first dugong conservation reserve to preserve the endangered marine mammal because it is facing extinction severely okay and already we have seen that tamil nadu government has decided to celebrate every year the birth anniversary of reformist leader ev ramsami perier on 17th of september as social justice day question number 5 governor baby rani morya who recently resigned was the governor of which state so she was the governor of uttarakhand and recently she has resigned on 8th of september 2021 and this is 2 years before completing her tenure and she was sworn in as the governor of this state on 26th of august 2018 now apart from it new prime minister of thailand is prayut chan ocha and he was in news because recently he has won the vote of confidence in the parliament okay and the former president of afghanistan was ashraf ghani 
एंड द प्राइम मिनिस्टर ऑफ मलेशिया इज इस्माइल सबरी याकूब देन न्यू प्राइम मिनिस्टर ऑफ लेबनान इज नजीब मिकाती एंड न्यू प्राइम मिनिस्टर ऑफ हाइती इज एरियल हेनरी एंड ही हैज रिप्लेस्ड जोमिनल मोइस हु हैज बीन असोसिनेटेड फ्यू डेज बैक द न्यू प्रेजिडेंट ऑफ जैम्बिया इज हका इंदे हिचिलेमा एंड अवर न्यू चीफ मिनिस्टर ऑफ कर्नाटका इज बी एस बोमई ऑल्सो डू रिमेंबर द चेयरमैन ऑफ फिफ्टीन फाइनेंस कमीशन मिस्टर एन के सिंह हैज रिसेंटली बीन इलेक्टेड एज प्रेसिडेंट ऑफ आई ई जी सोसाइटी वॉट इज आई ई जी इट इज इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ इकोनॉमिक ग्रोथ सोसाइटी फाइन क्वेश्चन नंबर सिक्स द यूनियन कैबिनेट हैज अप्रूव अ मेमरेंडम ऑफ अंडरस्टैंडिंग बिटवीन इंडिया एंड विच कंट्री ऑन कॉपरेशन इन द फील्ड ऑफ जियो साइंसिस सो यूनियन कैबिनेट हैज अप्रूव दिस एमओ यू बिटवीन इंडिया एंड रशिया ऑन द कॉपरेशन ऑफ जियो साइंस एंड दिस एमओ यू वॉज साइन बिटवीन जियोलॉजिकल सर्वे ऑफ इंडिया विच कम्स अंडर मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ माइंस एंड द ज्वाइंट स्टॉक कंपनी रॉस जियोलॉजिया सो दिस इज अ स्टेट होल्डिंग कंपनी ऑफ रशिया नो अपार्ट फ्रॉम इट India and Russia has agreed to form a permanent bilateral channel for consultations on Afghanistan. Also India has pitched its indigenously built fighter aircraft LCA Tejas, anti-tank guided missiles, Arjun main battle tank at the International Military Technical Forum that is Army 2021 which was recently being held in Moscow. Also recently India and Russia have signed a deal to procure AK-103 rifles as a part of Mega Infantry Modernization Program under which Indian Army is purchasing a huge number of light machine guns as well as rifles from the other countries. Then India and Russia has recently conducted 12th edition of joint military exercise named as Indra where in Russia's Volgograd and few months back india has also obtained a commercial offer for delivery of 21 mig29 fighters from russia and apart from all these things russia has recently conducted successful test of its s500 air defense missile system okay question number 7 with which organization assam government has partnered to strengthen the health infrastructure at the silchar medical college hospital So the Coal India Limited which comes under Ministry of Coal has signed a memorandum of understanding with the Department of Health and Family Welfare Government of Assam for strengthening the health infrastructure at the Silchar Medical College and Hospital which is a kind of only medical college and hospital in Barak Valley region Assam So in this new CSR initiative Coal India Limited will contribute 5 crore rupees towards setting up of an icu facility and medical gas pipeline which will benefit over 40 lakh people in the state now apart from it as per the coal ministry india's total coal production has registered a decline of 2.02% in which chatisgarh registered highest coal production followed by odisha and madhya pradesh Also, do remember that Jharkhand was the top producer of coking coal. Talking about Assam, recently it has decided to rename Rajiv Gandhi National Park as Orang National Park. And Assam was also in news because few days back it has signed a memorandum of understanding with 37 microfinance leaders for the implementation of Assam Microfinance Incentive and Relief Scheme 2021. and this scheme is aimed at providing financial relief to the microfinance borrowers there okay and many times already we have discussed that assam assembly has passed the assam cattle preservation bill 2021 so now it prohibits the sale and purchase of beef in areas which are inhabited by non beef eating communities such as temples okay question number 8 recently which public sector bank has been taken out of the pca framework by the rbi So recently RBI has taken Yuko Bank out of P 
TCA framework on improvement in financial and credit profile. So this decision gives the bank more freedom now for lending, especially to corporations and grows the network subject to prescribed norms. So actually the UQ bank was placed under PCA framework in May 2017 on account of high net NPAs and negative return on assets. So as of March 2021, its net NPAs declined to 3.94% from 8.54%. Okay. So now it has been taken out from the PCA framework. Apart from it, recently Karnataka government has roped in Jen Small Finance Bank. Why? To build digital payment infrastructure to support its Our School My Contribution initiative. So this software was launched on 5th of September there to provide accessibility to donors who wish to donate money to the government schools in Karnataka. Okay. Also, the Karnataka Bank in collaboration with MS Vibe Technologies Private Limited has launched Vice POSGO, which is a kind of point of sale device that processes business payments for the bank's merchant customers. So this device is an all-in-one swiping machine loaded with advanced features. Okay. Also do remember that Bank of Baroda has recently topped the digital scorecard for 2020 to 2021. Also the state Bank of Mauritius has partnered with Fintech Player One Card to launch a mobile based credit card named as Mobile First. Question number nine, which date in September is observed as International Day to Protect Education from Attack? So this day is observed globally on 9th of September and the first ever International Day to Protect Education from Attack was observed on 9th of September 2020. Okay, so it was just its first anniversary. And this particular day is observed to spread awareness about the difficulties faced by those children who are living in countries which are affected by military conflicts. And the purpose is to raise awareness of the importance of protecting schools as a protective and safe place for the students and educators and the need to put education at the top of the public agenda. Now, apart from it, we observe World EV Day on 9th of September every year. So this day marks the celebration of e-mobility and hence a special awareness campaigns are organized globally to educate people about the benefits of electric vehicles. And the first World EV Day was again observed in 2020. Then apart from it, International Day for Remembrance of Slave Trade and its abolition is observed on 23rd of August every year. And this day is intended to remember and honor the tragedy of the slave trade in the memory of all those people who were dehumanized by the cruel practice or systematic racism. Also, the International Day that commemorates the victim of acts of violence based on religion or belief is observed on 22nd of August. Now you have to tell me when do we observe Sanskrit day? Please write in the comments. Coming to last question, recently who has been announced as the brand ambassador of Tata AIA Life Insurance? So it has announced Indian athlete and Olympic gold medalist Neera Chopra as its brand ambassador. And this association also marks the very first brand partnership to be signed with the Neera Chopra. Okay. Talking about some of the important brand ambassadors, the brand ambassador of Kerala Adventure Tourism is T.R. Sri Jesh. Then brand ambassador of Amway India is Mirawai Chanu. And the brand ambassador of Cashify is Rajkumar Rao. And talking about Neera Chopra, do remember that RBI has also appointed him for Banking Fraud Awareness Campaign. Also do remember that MS Dhoni has become the first ever brand ambassador of Home Claim. And the brand ambassador of MotoGP is John Abraham. Now you have to tell me who is the person chosen by Adidas 
as its brand ambassador for stay and play campaign please write in the comment section now let's start with today's quiz here on the slide you can see five questions which have been taken from the past 2 3 days current affairs pause the video and try to solve each of these questions and at the end of the lecture do not forget to share your scores in the comment section so please be honest and do not cheat with yourself so that's it for today i hope you have liked the session these were the important news and events from today and we will meet again tomorrow with some more important current affairs till then stay tuned thank you so much for watching and please do not forget to subscribe to gk today with this minusat sana signing off